when a group of women professionals came together in 1981 to discuss the plight of women trying to get into business, the result was the birth of the Kenya Women Finance Trust, QUIFT. The women professionals, comprising bankers, lawyers, financial experts, managers, and trainers, made a personal contribution of 2,000 shillings each to finance the setup of QUIFT as a non-profit organization dedicated to uplifting the financial status of the girl child. Now, one woman whose professional career has been almost synonymous with the Kenya Women Finance Trust is, of course, Dr. Jennifer Wiria. You know her name. She joined the organization soon after its inception and has been instrumental in growing the institution. Today, Dr. Wiria is Group Chief Executive of Kenya Women Finance Trust and Kenya Women's Holding Company, an organization intricately related to the trust, as we will find out a little bit later. Now back to the trust itself. 31 years later, it is the largest deposit-taking microfinance institution in the country and the region with a cumulative asset base of 17.03 billion shillings as of December 31st last year, that's December 31st, 2011. Now, Quift has become so large that it has attracted the attention of the Central Bank of Kenya in regard to com complying with ownership structures of banks in the country. Our banking law bars investors who are not banks, foreign finance companies, or the government from owning more than 25% stake in Kenyan banks. Last week, Quift was in the news announcing that it would sell off at least 25% of its stake to a strategic investor to comply with CBK regulations. Now, Quift targets uh, is hoping to raise at least 1 billion shillings from the sale of that 25% stake. Now, the non-profit banking institution is currently valued at 4 billion Kenyan shillings. In 2010, Quift made history as the first microfinance institution in the country to acquire deposit-taking license from the CBK. Now, although today there are many deposit-taking microfinance institutions in the country, Quift controls about 70% of the MFI business in the country with a membership base of 400,000 women. Over the years, Quift has positively transformed the lives of many women who otherwise would not have had a chance to advance their lives through conventional banks. The approach to entrepreneurship encourages women to join together as a group of 10 to 15 who can then apply for either a group or for individual loans guaranteeing each other. This peer approach has ensured that Quift has a very low loan default index because every member becomes her sister's keeper. Quift has many other innovative financial products tailor-made for women. Currently, Mary Okello, a renowned entrepreneur in her own right, her family behind the successful Makini Group of Schools, she currently chairs the Quift board. Now, by targeting a niche market, women, from a business perspective, and as catalysts of positive socioeconomic change, Quift has grown from a donor-reliant organization to a self-sufficient banking institution. That's what it is today. So as Quift sets in motion plans to sell the 25% stake to a strategic investor by next year and another 25% to the public by 2014, just who are the current investors in this most inspiring African success story? As we've seen, Kenya Women Finance Trust was not set up as your conventional commercial financial institution. It was set up as a non-profit organization, limited by guarantee presently, what we can call the shareholding structure looks like this. Let's take a look. The Kenya Women's Holding Company Limited, we mentioned it earlier, headed by Jennifer Riria, holds 80% shareholding in Kenya Women Finance Trust. Employees of the Kenya Women's Holding Company Limited own, and of Quift, own 20%. It's that simple. So if you're interested in investing in this social enterprise, prepare yourself for 2014 when Quip shares are likely to be available to the general public. It's good news. So let's take a look at our quote of the week now. And it reads, many are the people who have missed an opportunity of a lifetime because the opportunity came dressed in overalls and looked like work. That's Thomas Edison very well-known American inventor.